Welcome to Unit 10, where today we're going to talk about the soluble mediators. These are um, things that stimulate, that are produced by some cells and stimulate the activities of other cells. So here we go. Cytokines are a soluble mediator that stimulates the adaptive immune response. Chemokines are chemicals that stimulate chemotaxis, so cells move to the area of inflammation or infection because of chemokines. There are 50 different types of chemokines, and the chemokines will determine which cell type moves where. Tumor necrosis factor mediates acute inflammatory response, especially to gram-negative organisms, and it acts as a chemotaxin. Interferons are cytokines that were first discovered in virally infected cells. They actually interfere with viral replication, and that's how they got their name. They act as antiviral agents and respond to tumors and antigens and microbes. There are three types of interferons I want to discuss today. Interferon alpha, interferon beta, and interferon gamma. Interferon alpha is important in immunosuppression. Interferon beta stimulates the growth of B cells, and it's sometimes referred to as interleukin-6 because it has many functions. And then interferon gamma activates macrophages. Interleukins are a type of cytokine or a type of soluble mediator. They're married by and act on lymphocytes. They are a polypeptide of activated cells that regulate immune response. They regulate growth and mobility of lymphoid cells affecting the inflammatory response. There are 33 different interleukins that have been identified, but we're only going to discuss six. Okay, let's talk about interleukin-1. Interleukin-1 is also known as lymphocyte activating factor. It activates resting T cells. It plays a role in immunoglobulin production and is secreted by the macrophage to activate T helper cells. There are three actions of interleukin-1, actually two actions of interleukin-1. The first action is called the action on inflammatory events, and the second action of interleukin-1 is its action on the central nervous system. The action on inflammatory events is that it mobilizes neutrophils from the bone marrow into the circulation, and it stimulates the hepatic production of CRP, which is an acute phase reactant, and increases the breakdown of proteins. A second action of interleukin-1 is its action on the central nervous system. It can lead to elevated body temperature, depress appetite, and promote slow-wave sleep. Interleukin-2 initiates clonal expansion of activated T cells and enhances the activity of natural killer cells against tumors. Interleukin-2 is called T cell growth factory, and it's produced by T helper cells to make more T cells. Interleukin-3 promotes growth of early hematopoietic cell lines, and it's also known as the multi-colony stimulating factor. It stimulates mature cells and may help with dysfunctional bone marrow disorders. Interleukin-4 encourages growth of resting B cells, and it will influence the synthesis of some immunoglobulins. Interleukin-4 is also known as B cell stimulatory factor. It is a major stimulus for the production of IgE also. Interleukin-5 activates resting B cells. It's also known as B cell growth factor 2. B cell growth factor 2 or interleukin-5 also, also stimulates IgA production. Interleukin-6 induces secretion of immunoglobulin molecules. It's also known as B cell stimulating factor 2. Interleukin-6 also helps induce immunoglobulin secretion. There are several types of acute phase reactants. And acute phase reactants are produced in the liver. They're proteins. They are a nonspecific indicator of inflammatory condition and tissue injury. Acute phase reactants are an innate body defense. Some examples of acute phase reactants are CRP, C-reactive protein, complement components C3 and C4, fibrinogen, haptoglobin, alpha-1 antitrypsin, procalcitonin, and seruloplasmin, which is increased in Hodgkin's disease. C 
C-reactive protein is one type of protein that can trigger the complement cascade. Its levels correlate with the degree of inflammation. For example, if you have a high amount of CRP, you have a high amount of inflammation. If you have a low amount of CRP, you have low inflammation. CRP is used clinically to monitor inflammation, infection, and autoimmune diseases. CRP is actually elevated in about 70% of all disease states, and it's used mostly to evaluate bacterial infections, especially in immunosuppressed people, or it's used to monitor post-operative infections. Okay, so just to summarize a little bit on today's lecture, um, we have our interleukins, our cytokines, our chemokines, tissue necrosis factor, interferons, and interleukins. Um, our interleukins, again, are a cytokine or a chemical produced by activated cells that are important in acute phase response and immune defense. Interleukins regulate growth, mobility, and differentiation of lymphoid cells. Lymphokines, you may hear that term before, are produced by T cells and are released when they come in contact with specific antigens and they stimulate monocytes and macrophages. Monokines, on the other hand, are produced by macrophages and affect the growth and activity of other white cells. Monokines are chemical mediators released by monokines and macrophages during the immune response. Interleukin-1 is the most important monokine, and interleukin-2, secreted by T, T helper cells, is the most important lymphokine. Okay, so interleukin-1 is secreted by the macrophage and activates T helper cells. It especially speeds up antibody production by promoting the proliferation of the T helper clones. Interleukin-2 is secreted by T helper cells and makes more T cells and makes or, or is the prime secretion of interleukin-4, which activates more B cells and resting T cells. So that's it in review of the soluble mediators.